Lei Ho Ma, everyone. I'm Will Young. So as a photographer, I always get uh, my friends asking me, uh, like, you know, I'm buying my first DSLR or camera. Um, what's the best one on the market? What should I get? Uh, and I always feel uh, terrible because it's kind of a short question, long answer type of thing. Uh, I can't really give them an answer because uh, it really depends. So I think the first thing that you should decide on is budget. And that will kind of, um, not restrict, but it'll, it'll kind of get you in that ballpark of um, what you're willing to spend. So uh, what I mean by budget is um, think of a range. So do you want to spend, I don't know, $200 or do you want to spend $500 or do you want to spend from 500 to you know, $2,000, something around that range. Uh, and then the second thing that you decide is uh, if you want to get a crop sensor or a full frame camera. So I just want to dive a little bit more into the full frame and crop sensor uh, kind of explanation without getting too technical. So basically in your camera, whether you're uh, looking at a mirrorless camera or a DSLR, there's a sensor that basically captures the uh, exposure, the light and the shadow and the colors of your image and that's how it takes a picture. So you can see in this diagram that uh, the full frame sensor or the bigger sensor uh, will just capture more uh, of the image and the smaller sensor also called an APS-C or crop sensor will just capture less. Uh, now it kind of depends because yes you can move back uh, physically, I mean, with your feet and capture the same thing. If you have a crop sensor, you can still capture that full frame. Um, I mean, in this uh, kind of realm of, of this picture. Um, and the same thing with the full frame. I mean, if, if you walk closer um, with your feet, uh, you can still get that same image if that is uh, the image that you want to get, that more of a cropped image. So the next one is megapixel 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 everyone talks about megapixel and basically companies will <laughs> it's almost like they're selling you on megapixels that's the first thing that they market um it's because there's this like s stereotype almost where uh people think that the bigger the higher the megapixel the better the camera the better the image um in the better the quality or, or whatever, but it really actually has very little to, to do with anything else besides the size. Um, so if you have a 24 megapixel camera, uh, opposed to a 45 megapixel camera, it's just a, a resolution size difference. So your image is just larger. So does megapixel count matter? Well, that depends on what you're shooting against. So if you're shooting, uh, say macro photography of like bugs or something and you have the intention of shooting and zooming in when you edit and cropping and you know c cutting everything else out and using that really really close up uh, image as your final image then yes definitely having a higher megapixel count or higher resolution bigger size that would be very beneficial to you because then you'll still have a, uh, a very nice image as your final product. Um, if you're not doing a lot of cropping, um, well, that's, that's really up to your call. Is it absolute necessity? It may not be. Um, I think for me, I, I'd rather have, well, it depends on what you shoot, but for me, I really rather have a camera that has a better dynamic range. So dynamic range is kind of like uh, comparing to your eyes. Uh, now, not to the certain extent or the same extent, but when you look at something, uh, say when you're looking into a sunset, you can see a lot of the clouds, you can see a lot of detail in the shadows in the foreground, and um, our eyes just have this amazing ability or a very high dynamic range, so to speak, that you can see all this detail in the highlights or the bright parts of the image and the shadows or the dark parts in the image. Um, now cameras can't exactly do the same thing to the same extent, but some cameras are better than others uh, in that 
ability, a dynamic range ability, um, so that they will capture a lot of detail in, say, the shadows, and you can help bring that back in uh, your post-production. Uh, another uh, thing that I, in my uh, work, I find important is autofocus. So the ability to autofocus, how many autofocus points are there, how many of them are cross type, um, which is kind of a whole other story. But in general, autofocusing is important for me. Say for instance, when I'm at a wedding and people are moving, uh, I need to have an autofocus that's responsive. If it's slow or if there's not enough dots, uh, autofocus dots in the camera, then it, it's, it just kind of inhibits my ability to work as fast as I can. Um, but I mean, if you're shooting, if you're shooting sports, that's, that's a big thing. If you're shooting products and your product doesn't move, then it doesn't really matter. Um, you can manual focus at that point. So another thing to consider is something called frames per second or also called FPS. Now, there's a frames per second in still photography and there's a frames per second in video. that are somewhat related, but not really. So frames per second in still photography just means how many um, frames the, your camera can take consecutively, continuously, if you just hold down the shutter release. Now you have to actually put your camera into this shutter release or um, frames per second mode. Um, and most cameras will have an option for, you know, say like three frames per second and then six frames per second or 12 frames per second, depending on the capable capabilities of the camera. Um, is that important to you? Well, that depends. Um, depends on where you're shooting. So if you're shooting, say, a lot of people cycling, um, might, be, might be a good idea to have a higher frames per second. If you're shooting sports, might be a good idea to have a higher frames per second so that you might not, it lessens your chance of missing a shot. Um, say for me, for weddings, yeah, I kind of use it, kind of not. Um, people aren't exactly running, so I, I don't really see myself using a very high frames per second. Um, but uh, if you're shooting you know, a car driving by or something like that and you want to have a lot of frames, then that might be important to you. Now, in terms of video, there is a frames per second uh, that is sort of related in a sense of, um, say most films are filmed on 24 frames per second. That's kind of like a lifelike, realistic uh, kind of look. Um, and if you want to do, say, for instance, uh, a popular thing is slow motion. So depending on how slow you want your slow motion, uh, you may have to shoot at a very, very, very high frames per second, which actually is not really available in most cameras unless you hit like a $10,000 range um, to, to get like a really good slow motion. Um, so for instance, the uh, frames per second from 24 frames, that's kind of a lifelike. Uh, if you do 60, 60 frames per second, uh, you can slow that down um, and it'll look somewhat slow motion, but if you want like matrix style slow motion, then you might need to shoot at like a thousand um, frames per second in video, which most cameras consumer grade I mean, won't have. So speaking of video, you also should keep in mind uh, the capability of the camera in terms of video. Do you need 1080p? Um, how many frames per second do you need at 1080p? Um, do you need 4K or 8K? Uh, also uh, consider the ports on your camera itself. Um, do you care if the camera has a microphone uh, input or a headphone jack input so you can do sound check and record audio straight to your camera? Um, do you have to do that if you're recording audio? No, you don't. Um, you can record your audio off camera and just sync that in post-production. That's perfectly fine. So uh, those are just things to keep in mind. So the next one is ISO or basically the sensitivity of light for your camera. Um, this is kind of, uh, it's important because when you are in a, say, uh, a poorly lit area and there's nothing you can do, you know, you're on the shutter speed that you, uh, the lowest shutter speed that you want without blurring images and you're on the lowest aperture that your lens can handle. 
uh, or you're at the aperture that you want. And the only other thing to do is to increase your ISO. Uh, so the ISO is kind of the last resort to increase because it also introduces something called noise, which will kind of, it will affect your image depending on how high the quality of the ISO is uh, the ISO capability for your camera. Now, this is kind of a funny thing. So when I first started photography, um, I got my first camera, it was a D80, a Nikon, amazing camera, but the ISO back then on cameras just sucked and the camera would be, I don't really remember now, but it, it would be, uh, you know, it would, in the specs, it would say that it could go up to, I think like, I don't know, 6400 ISO or something like that. And, you know, in a real world situation, you know, you, you're in a dark room or a poorly lit scenario. And I'm like, okay, well, I'll just bump my ISO up to 6400. Uh, but the image would just look like shit. It looked like something just threw up on it. So really that's partly a marketing thing so that um, people see that, oh, it, can, it has a huge ISO range. But man, it really depends on the camera. A um, 2000 ISO on one camera is not gonna look the same as 2000 on another camera. But again, that was a while ago and the cameras are just so much more powerful now. So, I mean, ISO ranges are insane. They can go up to like tens of thousands now. And um, not that you should shoot at tens of thousands of ISO, because I think if you go up to that range, it'll still pretty much look like shit. But um, yeah, cameras are just a lot more powerful now. So you, I don't think you have to worry as much uh, as you did back then. Another thing that you might want to consider is battery life. Now this is kind of a personal thing as well, depending on what you shoot, what you want the camera for, where you're taking it. Um, if you're taking it to travel, go hiking, you know, it might not be such a bad idea to uh, bring a few batteries with you anyway. Um, but uh, if you're, say, for me, shooting a wedding, it's very, very, very inconvenient for me to carry batteries with me if the camera only lasts um, I don't know, two hours, three hours, if I'm doing a 12 hour day. Now this may or may not be of value to you, but some cameras are rated weather sealed and some cameras are not. So say for instance, you're hiking and it downpours and your camera gets wet, then if it's weather sealed, you're good to go. Now, obviously I wouldn't recommend you to drop into the ocean, um, but an example is I did a wedding once that uh, it was in the winter and it basically blizzard that day, but it was this like amazing fluffy like fairy tale kind of snow uh, and it, it just worked out amazing. Uh, now the reason why I'm bringing this up is because it was cold that day and my camera basically felt like I was carrying a block of ice. I uh, one of the bridesmaids had a cup of hot coffee that she had actually was behind me when I was taking the shot. And uh, she basically, I would just turn to her and I would tell her that, okay, my hands are frozen. Can I hold your cup of coffee for two seconds? I literally could not even press the shutter release button because my fingers were frozen. So last but not least, there's size, weight, and price. So price really just depends on your specific uh, preference. If you're willing to spend lots of money on a camera, amazing. If um, you just want to start out camera and you know see how it goes, that's perfectly fine too. Um, the size of your camera kind of never mattered uh, back then. It was almost kind of like the bigger the camera, the more manly you were. But now it, it kind of seems like with the mirrorless cameras, things are getting a lot smaller, which for good reason, because I went to Europe for a month a few years ago and I brought this big mother and I, it took amazing images, of course, but uh, I feel like I lost five years off my life just trying to carry this thing. Now there is one more thing to keep in mind and that's something called a shutter actuation. Uh, that's basically a mileage, if you will, for your camera. And every time you take a picture, there is kind of a, a wear and tear on your camera. And uh, the lower end cameras, 
uh, might only be rated for like 100,000 clicks or something like that. And the higher end cameras might be rated for 300,000 or 350,000, whatever it may be, depending on the camera model. Now, will your camera die instant death once you reach the 100,000 or 300,000? No, it may or may not. It might actually die before that. It might die well after that. It might never die. We don't know. So it's kind of like, think of it almost kind of like a car. Um, and this is something that people don't really think about in terms of cameras. It, it is a mechanical thing. It is a machine. It is not going to last forever and ever and ever. Um, so think of it almost like a car. Now, if your shutter does give out, you can actually replace it, but it depends. If it's years down the road and your shutter gives out and you want to replace it, it may actually cost you more money to replace it than to just go out and buy a new camera. So kind of like that car concept. So these are, I think, the core things to look for when looking for a camera or figuring out what's the best camera. Um, but in my honest, honest, professional and non-professional opinion, I don't think there really is a best camera. It's more of the best camera that is right for you, um, depending on what you're shooting. And I truly believe that, I mean, if you invest into a camera that has kind of most of the specs that you want, that complements the style of shooting that you want to do, then I think that's great. You get a lot of use out of it, you get a lot of enjoyment, then that's money well spent. If you do have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below. Remember also to like and subscribe, and so you won't miss a single episode. Thank you very much, we'll chat soon.